All right, so we're back and we have our first print here actually um, with the Toronto uh, Micro Marathoner. I keep on saying mini, glad I didn't say it that time. Um, so this is my first design for the CAD. Let me just show you um, what the original one uh, on the drawing looked like. If you didn't catch it in the last video, this is what it looks like. Um, this is the size. So small adjustments, but generally um, the same shape, more or less. And uh, I just want to test the flexing. It's it's really quite flexy. So uh, compared to the the nano long range, I mean the nano long range just feels a lot more sturdy. I mean that's to be expected. These arms are a lot thinner, but I don't know what that will mean in the real world. Um, the arms, I mean, they're still pretty rigid. Obviously. Um, Honestly, the, the one in the picture here is a lot more bulky because when I put it into uh, Cura and I checked how heavy it was, it was about um, 12 grams, I would say. And so I turned the infill down. Uh, Dave C recommends 20% infill on this with PLA, which is what I use for both of these. And um, he said, uh, yeah, 20% infill, and I was like at 11, and I remember, I don't have a canopy on mine, he has a canopy on his, um, and I was like, okay, well that's too heavy, so I decreased it down to 10% infill, and uh, let's just say it's, I mean, to be honest, there's not much infill, most of it's just wall, as you can see here, but um, it's not a lot, um, it's, it's honestly pretty sturdy for how thin it is, I can give you the final weight right now. Um, so yeah, this one is the, menacing the canopy. I'm still working on the canopy. Um, uh, yes, the canopy I'm hoping will be one or two grams. And of course the tray. I expect the tray to be lighter, like the, the bottom tray to be lighter on this one because it's going to be smaller. So let's just put it on the scale here. So if you can see that, let me turn on the light. So it's 9.4 grams. And with the nano long range, it is 7. 10? Okay, that's not right. Let me just <laughs> let me just reset this. I was like, 7 grams? There's no way. I broke the arm too, so I, I really should be reprinting it, and it's missing half of the canopy. So, let me take that into account. I don't think it's going to weigh too much, though. So, yeah, we're, we're looking at uh, around 9.4 grams. And for the uh, Toronto Mini Marath Micro Marathoner, 9.4. Yeah, so, so this is still lighter, but just by hair and still missing the canopy, so really, um, I don't think you're missing too much uh, right now, so I might have to make some modifications. You can see the 18650 holder cell is, um, the the hole here is uh, still uh, broken, but it's fine to be honest because it's going to be mostly held on by glue, I think. I might just even to the two corners and for the screws and see how that goes. Um, in terms of like how strong it is, it's I mean, if you push down on it, like from one end to the other, it's, it's not going to break really. Uh, here, these guys bend a little, quite a bit, but these arms don't. Yeah, these, these arms are they're, they're quite strong. Um, the flexing this way is, is quite significant. I would say it's it's uh, definitely easier to flex this guy. It might just be because of the lever, because these these are longer edges. Um, but I don't know, this just feels more significant and hefty. Um, let me just get the calipers. They should be, actually this one has, uh, should be slightly thicker. So this is, oh no, it's actually 3.8. It's actually about the same. I set it as 4 in the CAD. So it was 3.8. That's pretty cool. Strange. Yeah, I'm not sure. Um, it is quite flexy over here, but, uh, I think if I, once I glue the can, um, glue the, the the tray, it'll be a lot less flexy, obviously, and the same with the nano long range. Um, yeah, I think I'll be looking to make some weight changes over here. I think I might just make this even thinner and see how that goes. Well, actually, this is, the rear is quite flexy, to be honest. Uh, it should be fine. I think it, it will really take test flights to figure it out. Um, maybe if I just fix this to connect it a bit and make this part a bit thinner. Should be all right, but I think it's good progress. Minor changes needed, and of course the canopy. Um, these arms are still quite uh, crash resistant, I would say, uh, on the sides. I think it's gonna protect the motors just fine, and the rear as well, and the front as well. Should be fine. All right, so let me just um, 
go back and uh, make those changes. Oh, actually, one more thing I forgot to mention. Uh, here's my Mobile 7, so I just want to compare the size for the cameras. So that's going to be, yeah, should be fine. And the flight controller is, I mean, it should be the same as Dave C's. So, yeah, about there should be okay. It's a bit difficult to see because I think I put the, the <laughs> it facing the wrong size because I made a little cutouts for the screw holes, but uh, yeah, it, it does line up, which is good. And the 18650 cell does also uh, line up as well. So that should be fine. And uh, time to make some small changes and make the canopy and test it out. Thanks. So I've been uh, looking at uh, the two frames just now. This is still the first iteration of the Toronto. Um, and so basically I've just been comparing with the Dave, 2C, uh, Dave C Nano Long Range. And um, uh, I've realized that, you know, this frame has actually a lot of, like, uh, room to be lighter, in fact. Um, I haven't Swiss, they, he hasn't Swiss cheesed this frame like I have here. Um, but to be honest, I wanted to find out uh, what happens if we get rid of these struts because right now they, they're actually quite bendy, but they do um, they do add some rigidity and some uh, durability uh, from to these two sidearms. But if actually, it's weird because Dave C has um, made room for a three inch prop here. Um, but I've also made room for a three inch prop and we have the same 18650 holder cell in the same position, but his arms are further out as you can see here. Um, so he could actually move it closer in and I'm actually kind of confused as to why he didn't do that because if you move it closer in, you're going to need, you're obviously you're going to save material, uh, so it's going to be lighter, but it's also going to be more durable because, uh, it's like a lever, right? Here's uh, the fulcrum. If it gets hit from the further away from the lever, you're going to get more leverage, um, to rip the arm off if that's a possibility. And, um, if you bring it closer, it's obviously less of a possibility. Um, you know, maybe you get the props in shot, maybe that could be a consideration, I guess that's not really a possibility with mine. I'm not sure if that's the case, which is why he did it, because obviously I didn't build it. But, you know, when I when I look at the, the video, it doesn't even look like the propellers are even in view um, of the camera at all, like they're straight up behind the camera, so I don't really understand why he didn't do that. Um, perhaps there's something, he's built a lot more frames than I have, so... Um, maybe that's um, that's the case. Uh, so basically what I want to do is I just want to cut off these ends here. I mean I just printed this brand new print but I'm going to print another one anyway. I want to see how much it flexes if I just straight up cut it off here. Um, and how much lighter it will be. How much each arm is. Um, this is probably, I'm, I'm, whether or not um, it's, it makes a significant difference, I'm still going to make this frame with this shape because I think it looks cool. Um, but Perhaps for future iterations, I might change that. So let me just cut it off here. Um, yeah, I can feel it. I think it's lighter already. I'm just going to cut one arm off, and then uh, let's see how heavy it is. That's almost, it's 0.8 grams. So now we're 8.6 grams. And uh, how flexible is it? Honestly, I I'd say it's about the same. i honestly say it's about the same. Oh, I just broke that. Wow. That was easy to break. Yeah, I, I would say this is more durable when I'm flexing just like that. But usually, you wouldn't... Um, I don't think you'd crash like this usually. You'd usually crash like this. Um, so, I mean, that's a big weight savings right there, to be honest. I also want to see what it's like if I remove these struts over here. Because um, I don't know, to be honest. Um, but yeah, it's it's significantly lighter. Uh, it's it's still quite strong, really. It's it's still it's still quite strong. Um, it's just the end. I think it's especially because uh, that's pretty thin there. Yeah. Okay. So um, let's see. Should we cut this side too? Yeah. Let's cut this side. I mean, I'm printing another one anyway, so I mean, it's not a big deal. It's going to go to the. I mean, it's not the garbage, but, I mean, it is the garbage, but I'm going to be keeping it to maybe use for a later project, these old materials. So, um, I mean, it's, it's, it's strong. It is strong. Oh, so that's another thing then. It's this rear part is going to be an issue if I remove these struts as well. So, 
I think, uh, let me just get a weight on this. I mean, you already know the weight because I already cut two of them off, but it should be around like almost seven grams now. Yeah, so um, basically if you want to improve this frame in the future, uh, if I want to improve this frame to be even lighter, I would do less Swiss cheesing and make it look like a <laughs> less of a G-string like frame where I just cut holes and everything and make it super thin like a spaghetti. Um, but, and more uh, solid like it is it is over here. Um, and rather I would probably shrink the, the wheelbase on this, uh, this axis over here because honestly I really don't need this much space. I only added this much space for the canopy and the camera um, to um, and to give some room if you have any extra parts. But honestly, you can even move this motor like back here because it's not gonna hit the flight control board. If I, I think there's still a 1.5 uh, inch gap there. Um, yeah, there's, there's plenty of room before I hit the flight control board. So really it's not an issue if I move it forward or back um, for, for this motor. So if I really wanted to save weight, I can just shrink it like that as well. And that would give me a lot more, I mean, that would give me less room to work, but that would also make it uh, a lot lighter. And the same with this side, like I can move this motor almost up to here, really. So it's almost one length of the motor screws. Um, yeah, so now I have a broken frame, yes. <laughs> but I also have some uh, considerations for next time. Um, so these, these are quite essential for this build, actually. These are these are quite essential. I would say they prevented a lot of breakage um, for this iteration. Um, they help keep this piece in place at the back. Um, they prevent breakage over there. I will thicken this part for next time, so it's not just held by that thin piece. But still, I mean, uh, that's quite that's quite a weak joint right there. Like if I if I crash like that and then it bends, especially because of this piece, it extends it a bit. So again, the lever mechanism, um, it's going to rip this part off. So hopefully if I have the glue and uh, gl glued in, so it should be like that. Hmm. It's actually not glued in quite too well. I'll probably have to glue in this, uh, this tab here as well if I want that extra strength. But to be honest, it wouldn't break up because this tab is in place anyway. And this is going to be held down solid. It's probably going to be like almost fused to the frame, hopefully. Because it's screwed in and it's super glued. So it won't, it, I don't think it'll break that way. Maybe if I don't glue in the tab, it might break that way. Like that downwards. Say so if, I, if I flew and then I hit a wall or something and just... Popped it down. Uh, so that could be a problem. So th these are still important, but they do save a lot of weight if you remove them, if I redesign the frame. So uh, that's something to know. Hey guys, all right. So I have um, my second iteration of the frame here. Um, this is the first iteration here. As you can see, I just tested with the tolerances of the screws here. Uh, that's a bit of water for me washing my hands. Uh, so I've shortened everything quite a bit. Shorten the front motor here to the flight controller, as well as the rear motor. Obviously, I've ripped it off in the last last uh, testing segment, but uh, I shortened it and thinned this part out a bit. I thinned um, these struts as well on the ends and made them shorter. Um, I made it so that it just overlaps the motor just a little bit to hopefully get some motor protection. I removed this um, uh, support like rib kind of thing over here um, because if you are mounting the US the flight controller the other way you want room for the USB um, which I totally forgot about um, chances are I think I'm going to be mounting it below like with the USB port facing down but if you're running like a Cadex Loris or something and you want to mount the flight controller closest to the frame and the Cadex Loris right below it then you're going to want the USB port open but that also means that you won't be able to have a battery in and plug it into the computer at the same time so uh, I guess there's some trade-offs there. Uh, yeah, so in terms of flexing, it's uh, it's it's still all right. I'm just gonna get my scale again a second. So I got my scale here, and when I printed, so this is with 20% infill. So this is uh, two times more, well, 10% more infill than the previous version. Um, and honestly, they're about the same. It's about one gram heavier. Uh, 
actually, sorry, this is about the same weight as the Nano Long Range, actually, but um, the, the, in, the infill um, took about just one gram um, compared to uh, 10%, so I actually haven't weighed this before, so let's see what it is. Um, 9.13, so the previous one I believe was 9.4. After I cut off the arms, I don't remember actually. So 9.13, and this is 10 point, so this is one gram lighter. Um, and this one has a missing piece over here of the canopy. Um, but then again, I haven't, I haven't printed the canopy yet. I've actually just finished designing it. Um, but honestly, I think I'm quite pleased with it so far. Obviously, it's hard to say just by flexing it like this, how well it's going to be. Because, I mean, this one... I, th I would say it's more rigid, obviously, because it's thicker, but it's not as much, like, it's not that much more rigid that I would say. Um, but yeah, we're, we're really cutting it close here. <laughs> Actually, honestly, the, the, the wheelbase, like, the overall dimensions are pretty close, to be honest. Um, there's a full one gram lighter. But then again, yeah, I th I don't have the canopy, so I'm gonna try to print out the canopy. The canopy is really thin, to be honest. The way I made it, it's one millimeter thick. So if we have a, a caliper here, I believe this might be one millimeter. That's gonna be super thin. That's 1.5 millimeters. So like this is going to be a really thin canopy. I'm not sure gonna how protective it's gonna be, but to be honest, I don't think this one's that protective. This canopy itself, because if you hit it from the side, it just snaps off like this one over here. Because it's the way the 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 print works, the layers, um, the layer adhesion makes it really easy to to snap off, and that's the case for any uh, 3D print. So there's really no way around that. Um, but uh, Let's see how, so they have it two millimeters thick. I'm feeling in the middle here they have it one millimeter and the, on the edge they have it two millimeter. I'm just gonna have it one millimeter the whole way around. Um, but I did make it so, I mean, this frame, chances are either you'll be 3D printing it or if you're really fortunate, you can, I guess, um, CNC uh, carbon fiber it. Um, but uh, yeah, so the way it's gonna attach is with these two holes over here. Uh, these two holes over here, and then it's also going to go under the motor screws. Um, so all you have to do is just unscrew the motor screws, and then slot into these two slots over here. Sorry about that, that's from my phone falling. Um, and then you can replace the canopy however you'd like. But uh, I don't think I'll be crashing this guy too hard, and even if I am, I don't think the camera is going to be in too much trouble. Because if we look at like stuff like the mobile over here, like this, this, this plastic here is is way, way, it's it's way softer, it's way more flexible, and it's like. It's barely in front of the, of the camera, like it's not doing that much protection. So if you're landing like upside down like that, which I've have done a lot, then that's not that's going to be a problem. But um, I guess since it has the like the hoops, the whips, the the ducks will be fine. But the same thing with this, you got this nice pointed part over here. So maybe that will hopefully prevent a lot of the damage to the camera. I don't know. We'll, we'll have to see. To be honest, I don't know. Um, but I, I, I think the, the canopy design is going to be pretty cool, and uh, I'll be showing that uh, next, because I actually haven't showed that in the previous design video. Yeah, so, um, pretty happy with this. I might test fit some components, um, but i probably wait for the canopy to be done first, so you'll probably see that next. Hey guys, so, uh, I have my first, um, uh, iteration of my canopy here. I think the canopy looks pretty good. I'm pretty happy with it. Um, the tolerances aren't quite right for these pegs that go in the rear. Um, I gotta figure out the tolerances for these screws so far. Um, but otherwise, it looks pretty cool. I'm quite a fan of it. Uh, so the screw's just gonna go here and the motor's gonna be mounted at the bottom. So the same screw that's holding the motor down is gonna hold the canopy down. And I'm planning to fit my VTX at the back of the camera. But obviously you would want your VTX at the bottom with the stack if it's too large. Um, so right here it's a bit large, but I can slide it in there. And I'm probably just going to double side to tape it. Or get some putty or something like that to get it in there. And then just place it flat. And it should be good. But uh, yeah, I'm pretty pleased with how it turned out. Oh, one more thing. i got to check out how heavy it is because... Um, uh, weight is everything here, and I want to be at least competitive with the weight of the nano long range, of course. So let's just see how heavy it is. So the frame itself, right now we have screws on it, so it's 10.8. Uh, 
And we're up to 13. So this is 3 grams. That's quite heavy, actually. It's quite a heavy uh, canopy. I didn't expect that, to be honest. So we're actually slightly over. Um, because the nano long range is about... Um, about 13 grams as well, but I don't even have the bottom piece yet. So it could also be the screws because the screws are metal. Um, I don't want to take them off right now. Let me just, how heavy are screws? Yeah, I guess it could be the screws. I would say that the frame is about the same weight, more or less. Um, you could shave off an extra few pounds by just getting a simpler canopy. But I really like this design because it kind of goes with the more triangular look of the frame. But uh, it's, I guess, not the most practical. 